Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We're an unofficial D&D podcast where four friends play d and I'm Andy, and I'm the DM for our adventures in the world of Theros. And welcome back to our eighth game. Let's go ahead and reintroduce the players for this game right now. I'm Jimmy. I play Gron, the sensible Minotaur Barbarian your family deserves. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Scala. I live to put Andy on tilt, and I play Andromedy, the human mage. Oh my god, that's so true. My name is Jeppy. I play the uncatchable, zoomiest of the zoomers, Clix the Leon and Rogue. How old are you? How old is Clix? <laughs> How old is Clix? <laughs> I don't, I don't feel... think anyone's a Zoomer here. <laughs> yeah, but, well, Zoomer in this definition means he is of any age but can go really fast. He is the same age as Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Are we allowed to say? Yeah, canonically, yeah. Without further ado, let's get back into our game. A recap. The party came face to face with the Eater of Hope, a terrifying demon who had taken up residence feeding off the damned souls of the Forgotten Temple buried within the Ashlands. After some truly wild rolls, a wish spell coming into play, and some absurdly lucky divination rolls later, the party utterly destroyed this fearsome demon without so much as any injury at all, other than Gron going into a rage and slightly injuring his friends. After which the party discovered the gravity of the Pyxis of Pandemonium, that seemed to be containing the crown that they seek. Deciding not to open it, they traveled with it in tow, out of the temple, out of the Ashlands, nearly getting caught by the ancient dragon Time Drinker, some Felhide Minotaurs, and quickly found themselves through a long, dark passage and out into the middle of the Phoboros. With Gron leading the way, they trekked south and encountered none other than Califex in a hoplite scouting party overrun by a Minotaur warband. They came to the heroic aid of the Hoplites, where Gron was reunited with his lifelong companion. Together with this party, now with the company of Hoplites, they returned towards Akros, where now they make camp near the polis and prepare for the next part of their quest and the looming fight ahead. The three of you sit in this makeshift camp, Califex at Gron's side, this Hoplite scouting party's leader, Bratos, Tending to the evening watch. What do the three of you do? I suppose I should catch up with Califex. So, brother, how has Akros been treating you? Oh, Gron, these past few weeks have been terrifying, to say the least. I found myself in Akros, and immediately he is kind of showing you his hand, and on it there is a rather unassuming ring that he's had his whole life since he was a child, with a small insignia of a ram. All of the Akroans, they said I was somebody important. I had no idea. They called me a lectoy, something having to do with the founding families of Akros, the original warriors who came together and built the polis under Eroes' guidance. But here I just thought if I came here, I could join the guard and find some safety for ourselves. I had no idea we would be swept up in all of this. Yeah. Gron, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I know. Tell me, your adventure. Well, we traveled up the mountains, met the followers of Perforos, the flame speakers, and then we, well, we met Perforos himself. That was wild. That's simply amazing. We ventured through One-Eyed Pass, fought some Cyclopses, Met someone by the name of, uh... What was his name again? Andromedy would look at you, and they would put a finger over their lips. Like, we should probably keep that a secret. Gron, roll insight. Five. I don't know if Gron would get that off Andromedy. And Califex is my BFF, my brother. For sure. Tell him everything. Oh, right. His, uh, his name was Anax. That can't be right. Gron, you, you're probably forgetting their name... How is that possible? Annex died decades ago. Well, I saw him right there in the flesh. He uh, did a number on one of the Cyclopses. Very impressive. I can't believe it. By the gods. What a strange time. 
I've prayed, Gran. I've prayed to Erois and to any god who would listen that we would be reunited. I've also had the help of uh, a couple of gods. Not the ones I would have expected. What do you mean? Well, there's Clothis, who I'd never heard of before a few weeks ago, and Mogus. Mogus has been helping you. You could say that, I suppose. I... Well, frankly, I've never cared one way or the other about those ever-feuding gods, but you're here now, so I guess we owe them our thanks, don't we? I think you're right. Gron, he takes your arm in both his hands. If we make it out of here, if we are to see the end of this catastrophe, there will be a place for us here. Imagine, imagine a home for us. One where we don't have to keep wandering the wastes or constantly avoiding danger. They will see you for the hero I know that you are. And if they don't, well, brother, then they'll have to answer to me. I've heard all that before. You know I trust you with my life, but last time we tried this, didn't quite work out the way we wanted, did it? Oh, noble brute. I know we'll make it out of this, all right. I have no choice but to trust you. And I you. We leave this scene. Andromedy and Clicks, what are you up to? Biscuits made, bedtime accomplished. I'm already asleep. Clicks, off to bed. Andromedy. Andromedy's going to do some more reading. Cool. I'm going to try and finish the Tome of Understanding. Very cool. You set up for study in the middle of this makeshift camp with the small number of the Crowan hoplites keeping guard and watching the smoke rising in the distance over the ridges. Bratos, their leader, sees you do this and looks over quizzically, saying, I'm not a particularly learned man, Oracle. I follow Erois, Heliod, Perforos. Oh, I would say you're too humble. There are not many who know the ancient names of the Titans. They have been forgotten to history by many. I found it interesting that you recalled the legend. <sighs> that foul monster. The story of Croxa was something that my grandfather would tell to me while I was a child, something of a ghost story. But I never forgot it, that's for sure. Tell me, what is this god of destiny? What is her purpose? There has to be a reason for all of this madness. This madness comes as a result of those who are ambitious or arrogant or avaricious and think that their needs are greater than that of all of Theros and in pursuit of self-fulfillment would defy destiny and break it. And from those broken bonds brings all you see before you. Clothis has kept her eternal watch in the underworld to seal the titans away. But so reckless have the souls above been with destiny that all of this peril that you see before you has been allowed to proliferate. And so she has come to right that wrong, to put everything back in its proper place. Well... If she's really strong enough to do that, then every living soul on Theros better start praying to her, huh? She does not require your prayer. She is old. The ancient legends say that she and Crufix sprang into being at the same time, brother and sister. They have never sought mortal devotion. They simply seek to provide a framework for all on Theros, so that those dread questions may have answers. What is beyond the horizon? What am I meant to do? Well, like I said, Oracle, I'm no master of those thoughts, but one can only wonder, I suppose, at its majesty. Indeed. For most souls, so long as you do what you believe is right, you serve Clothus well. Aye. And he turns and takes his watch. As you open your tome, go ahead and give me a roll. I'm going to give myself guidance on this. Okay, 18 plus 7 is 25. With that third roll, in a similar fashion as the times before you appeared into this ancient text, your eyes gloss over and several minutes pass. Some sort of 
confounding, impossible discovery trying to be discerned in these pages. But much quicker than the two times before, you reach one final statement at the end of this book. And the now familiar voice, the follower of Horizons, enters your mind and says, Hear these words. For all possible pasts and all probable futures, there is but one thread of destiny that connects the whole of this world. And no matter the bending and breaking of this thread, with every chaotic event, every destructive path, or even every noble intention, the phrase leave and return always the same end, as is the same beginning. There is but one exception to this law. Those forces who are not of this world. My master has written it so into this book, so that those who come after, as those who have come before, recognize The greatest dangers of this world are nothing compared to those not from within, but without. The book closes, and an enormous, echoing boom, like an explosion in the distance, cracks through your mind. You have successfully read the Tome of Understanding as we know it, and your intelligence and wisdom scores have both increased by one. Very nice. Then I want to go over to Gron, and I want to say thank you for your leadership over the past few days. I doubt we would have made such good time without your experience in that desolate land. Oh, well, it's like you say, there's a reason that we're all together here, and I guess that's my role. No need to thank me. There may not be need, but I do feel gratitude. Gron is an interesting word in the Minotaur language. As I understand, it can have several meanings? Well, the Minotaur language is pretty simple. There aren't that many words, so some of them are reused, some of them are given different meaning over time. Gron means green, but... Over time, it's taken on other meanings as well, like growth, spring, rebirth. Fascinating. I wonder if it will take on a new meaning when your exploits are written into legend. That's what every Minotaur hopes for. I think it is a worthy name for you to have chosen. As I have known you, I think it is evident that you have great capacity for growth and the duality of gentle and harsh weather that is attributed to spring, I hope you can fully embrace it into yourself and let go your old burden. That is what I meant before when I said your name was Grom. I see now. Thank you. Of course. Good night. Good night. And is going to bed. Okay. The party retires under the guard of the hoplites, and in the middle of the night, under the vast sky of Nyx overhead, Gron, you toss and turn. Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. Eleven. You find, although you are reunited with Califex, there is a uneasy feeling as you try and sleep. Your rest is restless and you have to get up you have to stay awake you have to stay alert even though there is a company keeping guard never leaves your mind there is a flash in the few errant hours you are able to find true rest a horrid voice shouting out can't you see i have taken everything from you and now I will take you. I will be your end. Meanwhile, Clix, similarly 
to your compatriot Gron. Your rest is not easy either. Go ahead and give me a wisdom saving throw. 19. Well, never mind what I just said. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I, I made some pretty damn good biscuits, and I cozied right up. The anxiety, perhaps, of knowing that you will have to face Lyukar in the coming days, for whatever reason, has not been an obstacle to Clix's rest. And lastly, Andromedy, you sleep well, but in the pre-twilight hours, you are awoken by the subtle rumble of thunder. And as you stir, you see a figure in front of you. A billowing blue robe. She lowers her hood, and you see Palamid. Well, aren't you a sight for troubled eyes? Troubled indeed. Is this a dream? I'm afraid not, Mathetes. I was given a vision. I saw your familiar, or the form of it at least, flying through my mind, and thus I come to pay your party a visit. I see. I look over to my shoulder where Scully is perched, and I patter between the antenna. There is much work to be done. Can you get us to the Citadel safely? I'm afraid that my sorcery is only so strong. One of you, perhaps two, but... This whole god, I'm afraid I can't. The whole of Akros is... She hangs her head as she sits beside you in this camp. The hoplites, all having shifted through their watches, only Califax remains standing guard. Even my visions from Keranos have only amounted to a fraction of the chaos that has unfolded. Even with the strength of the Akroan Legion called to arms, all of the strength of all of the hoplites and all of the soldiers, West Gates came crashing down four days after you left, and the whole of the polis has been on fire ever since. When we fought against the forces of Xenagos, the city walls were never breached from any side, let alone from the Farragax. She looks directly at you with crackling blue eyes. Tell me, what have you found on your quest? I have found the source of our difficulty, and perhaps a tool that we might use against it. I will uncover the Pyxis. Where did you find this? It carries a great curse. Indeed. We found it in a long-buried temple to Clothus. Within it is one piece of the tool of which I spoke. There are two other pieces, gemstones of power, held by individuals within the city. The reason these forces have overwhelmed us so is because they are not spurred on by some imposter god, but by something older and fouler. I have seen visions of this shadow, this monstrous endless hunger. What clarity has the goddess of destiny shown you that mine has not shown me? This tool, this eye of creation, it may be one of the ancient weapons that Clothus used when first she fought the Titans. So perhaps it may be of use against them again. She looks up towards Nyx above, and she raises her hand, and you see from within the sky itself an enormous web of lightning streak across in all directions. She lowers her hand, looking directly at you with no semblance of any of her former carefree attitude. Then we stand before the edge of annihilation itself. Let my beacon of inspiration, this cry in the darkness, let it muster those who recognize this call. We're going to need much more than the forces that still remain among the living in Akros. Yes, if word can be sent to Melitus, to Cetessa, to as far as the fleets of Neolantin or the Sun King of Oreskos, we will need every power on Theros that has power to spare in this coming trial. We are at your disposal. I give a bow, and I'll see if I can wake up the others. As you go to do that, in a flash, a crack of light. She's gone. The... Light of dawn comes, as you can all still plainly see the smoke 
billowing up. What do you do? Gron wakes up from that horrifying nightmare of Hargot, and it takes him a moment to get his bearings, remembering what happened the day before, and that he is, after all, reunited with Califex. And relief sets over him, even knowing what has to be done today. Clix wakes up in a stretch and just staring over towards the billowing smoke just says, Oh, this ought to be interesting. So, what is our way inside? I don't know about a way inside, but once we're there, I think I can get us most of the way to where we need to be. Bratos turns to the three of you and says, Well, there's only one way left in. That's the way we came out. Hope you've got enough climbing gear for the three of you. Clicks, clutches his kitten pittens. (laughs) (laughs) At his side. As he gestures down towards the billowing canyon that divides your company and the western walls of Akros. So are we above Akros right now? You are basically on these bluffs on the other side of the canyon and the bridge. So you're maybe less than half a mile away. The way the terrain is, you can't see the entire polis proper. I'd say maybe you can see like the faintest bit of the top of the colophon or the citadel, but you would basically have to come up and over these ridges and then you would kind of see the entire thing. So then, where do you need to go? I should hope to reach the citadel. It's the only place left standing. I suppose that does make the most sense. Do you know where these jewels are, or the people who hold them? There's a minotaur by the name of Hargot. I believe he possesses one. I don't know where he is now, but I saw him in Akros last I was there. One among a horde of thousands. That doesn't sound too promising. How about you, Leonin? I think just outside the Colophon might be one of the jewels in the hands of my father. Right then. He gestures to the rest of his company. Let's get to work. And you all proceed up and over a vast ridge. This guard all the while keeping a extremely vigilant look as you travel. Three of you go ahead and give me perception checks as you cross this rise. Five. Six. Twelve. Okay. Clicks and Andromedy, at the very least, you are taken aback by the scene. The bridge itself, this mighty Faragax bridge, nearly torn completely asunder, practically uncrossable in its state. The black smoke swirling higher out of the canyon than either of you have ever seen it before. And these billowing clouds from all corners of the lower and upper wards, the polis. Gron, beyond that, you can see that the roof of the once magnificent Temple of Triumph completely destroyed and the largest column of this fiery destruction rising from within it. Well, worse than you thought? It's pretty bad. I think it's only going to get worse when we get in there. The three of you are led down towards the canyon wall, about three or four hundred feet away from this side of the bridge, where a very small, nearly perfectly hidden staircase descends this side of the canyon wall. I guess later, Bratos, if you can get us to the silent weave just outside the Temple of Triumph, I may have someone that can help us. You heard him. Let's go. Very carefully, very cautiously, you all begin to descend this staircase into the black mist. As you descend, your vision becomes heavily obscured and then nearly blinded as the hoplites all take their short swords, some of them taking out small torches, or begin lighting them. Thick, black haze all around, and nothing but this canyon wall to hold on to. Califex, perhaps in front of Gron in this marching order, looks back over his shoulder. Step careful now. It's a long way down. <laughs> How far down does it go? Well, (laughs) we're only looking for another bridge, a sort of smaller secret one, an ancient one that dwells a bit further down. 
And it just keeps going beyond that, <laughs> to my knowledge. I mean, surely there's a bottom. Perhaps. But that bottom may not be of this earth. Brato speaks up. They say the underworld's down there. Nope, that's just Volkos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Volkos. <laughs> they say the underworld's down there. I would mind your step. Everybody just go ahead and give me either an athletics or acrobatics check. Can I give people guidance on this? Yep. Then everybody take a d4. 19. 17. Dirty 20. Nice. Okay. Not the easiest DC, but passing everyone above a 15, you descend these stairs. And at the bottom, you find a very small platform built into the rock of this canyon side. As you've been descending, the stone itself shifting from a dull brown-red sandstone to a deep, dark red with veins of some black ore. And in front of this platform, there is a incredibly narrow, ancient rock bridge. A small arching columns of which beneath it stretch down into black abyss. Now then, one at a time. I'll go first. We have to cross this? <laughs> I told you it wasn't going to be easy. The hoplites begin taking out coils of rope. Bratos taking one in his hand, hands the other end to Califax. Like I said, I'll go first. He takes his the spear off his back, and with it in one hand and his shield in the other, you can see him begin precariously walking across this bridge. You see him vanish into the black mist in front of you. I guess I'll go next. Be careful, Gron. As opposed to, oh, right, like reckless, like I do everything. All right, let's go. <laughs> I like how you said that in character. <laughs> yes, that is what I meant. He kind of pats you on the back and, Gron, go ahead and roll me. Athletics or acrobatics? 13. Okay. You begin crossing this dark path out in front of you. So you get far enough away from the rest of the party where they begin to kind of disappear behind you in the darkness. And your foot slips briefly. You have the rope there, so go ahead and give me a dexterity saving throw with advantage. Are you fucking kidding me? Six. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gron, you're in basically total darkness because of this, this cloud, so... As you begin to slip, you can see that you go to grab the rope, but you see it's perhaps a little farther away than your grasp was intending. What do you do as you as you see this happen? What do I do as I grab for the rope? He rolls a six and fails. <laughs> do you do you do you like say anything anything like that? I look directly down at the black void. That's the opposite of what you want to do. Gron, Gron. Califex seeing the rope begin to tug and move a bit. I'm okay. What's going on with Gron? Oh dear, no! Califex begins running across this incredibly narrow bridge into the darkness. Andromedy and Clix, you see... You see Califex vanish. Clix is gonna run ahead. Okay. Okay, I guess we're doing this. I'll follow Clix. Okay, so for the purposes of this skill challenge, you can use your reaction at any time, but let's go ahead and roll initiative. Twenty. Four. Five. Yeah, that tracks. <laughs> um, Clicks, you actually beat Califex to the punch, so as he disappears in front of you, you get to act first. Cast Kitten Warp and get in front of Califex. You have second story work, so the DCs for you are going to be much easier than they are for Gron. So you leap... How much movement do you spend on this first turn? As much as it takes is kind of my feeling here. I mean, I'm, I'm being okay. reactive, so... So you regular move, you use your cunning action move again, you go a full 70 feet and find Gron hanging by the edge of this bridge by his hands. I'm fine. What's the rush? What do you do? I can't pull up Gron, so Clix is going to say... Just hang on. No. And then I'm gonna 
I'm gonna try to smash a kit, this kitten pit into the stone and really get it and just hammer it down there with the hilt of my short sword. Awesome. Go ahead and make an attack roll. Natural 20. No way. Very cool. So, so I break um, the whole bridge by punching it. You, I mean, <laughs> if there was a nat one, if it was a nat one, that might happen. But this per- very precarious scene, you dig this kitten pitten into the side of the bridge and hammer it in with your dagger. That's your action. I'm basically counting that as the, as the help action. And then that will carry for anything else Gron does rather than just one round. Okay, and then I will, since I've used my action, I will call out to, I'm assuming Califex is the nearest, get the rope, help me secure this line. Great. While you're doing all of that, just go ahead and give me one acrobatics check. 24. This bridge may be precarious to someone as large or beefy as Gron, but to Clix, this is nothing. Andromedy, you see Califex rushing forward in front of you. He takes his action. Clicks, you see him come up beside you, reach down his hand for Gron. Hang on. He is going to try and pull you up, but he's not super strong. Okay, that's a 17. Gron, he begins pulling you up, but you are enormous. So we'll say that he has begun pulling you up. And if you succeed on your next roll, then this will be over and done with. That is Andromedy. Andromedy will, if the rope is not swinging wildly anymore, take it and try and pull themselves cautiously forward just far enough so that they can see what's happening. Okay. So you would go your 30, you still can't see anyone in front of you. Okay, then I keep moving. Okay, so dashing. Dashing will get you more or less 5 to 10 feet away. You can now see the sequence unfolding. Clicks having hammered into the, the stone and what did clicks. I, what did I hammer? Uh, the kitten pitten Thank into you. the stone and Califex beginning to, with their aid, pull up Gron, who is hanging off the side of this bridge. I am going to need you to go ahead and make either athletics or acrobatics with advantage. Very good. Good thing. Uh, That's going to be a 17. Okay. Yeah. You are able to traverse this bridge seemingly more cautious than you saw Califex or Clicks, but to no detriment. You find your footing and cross. I know what my strengths are. Hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Gron, go ahead and give me a athletics check with advantage. All right. Uh, 18. Okay. With the help of clicks, Califex, you pull yourself up. You are now between the two of them. Clicks is ahead of you, then it's you, then it's Califex, then it's Andromedy. What's the hurry? I'm fine. Let's, uh, let's keep going. <sighs> clicks kind of walks close to Gron and puts a hand on there. I don't want to say shoulder. I don't even think Clicks could reach that high, but let's say like <laughs> let's say like forearm. It's not that tall, but Fair. but Clicks still, it's not comfortable. Like foot, it's not comfortable. Yeah. Like a foot and a half taller. Yeah, that. Clicks just puts like a, a hand on on their on Gron's forearm and just says, "For what comes next, I'm going to need you to be a lot more cautious and a lot more quiet." We'll see. Clicks, you catch Califex giving you a look like we'll go ahead and roll insight. <laughs> I already does it look like you really think that's possible, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to say it. <laughs> uh, well, great. You're going to have to because I just rolled insight 18. It's exactly that kind of look. Yeah. Like, that's he's going to try, that's a tall but. Order. <laughs> yeah. Look at him. <laughs> look at him. Uh, that's exactly the look that you see. The four of you now, as you've all ventured out into this, the middle of this bridge, go ahead and roll another either. Athletics or acrobatics with advantage. 20. Nice. All right. 26. If a die hopped up on my keyboard, is it still you can valid? Reload if you want. I mean, it was a nat 20, but I, yes. I want to know if, if it's off the table, so to speak. Yeah, we'll keep it. I suppose I'll go ahead and roll for Califex. Okay, not amazing, but still passes. Proceeding together, you cautiously cross the remainder of this bridge and find... Bratos standing on a similar platform on the other side, 
within a small archway that leads into a very narrow and dark tunnel. Andromedy, on your nat 20, I'm going to give you something extra. Go ahead and roll me Perception or Arcana with advantage. Cool. That's a 23 Arcana. You can't tell how far down you are compared to the surface and the edges of this canyon, but as you are kind of cautiously making your way across, you look down and you feel this feeling that is now becoming all too familiar to you as you have begun understanding the enemy that you face. This cold, empty void just below you. Cool. I, um, you know, I just stew in my existential dread, I guess. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of that in this game. Um, <laughs> this is the game. Yep. So the four of you successfully cross. Nobody falls into the underworld. You see behind you the remaining hoplites beginning to cross. This passage that you find yourselves in front of is incredibly narrow, just as much, if not more so, than this ancient bridge itself. And so I am going to need a marching order here. Bratos will be in front. The remaining hoplites will be behind. But how do you want to order the three of you and Califex as you enter this tunnel? And this tunnel is going to come out where? Do we know? You do not know. Does, uh... You can ask, yeah. What is his name? Bratos. Bratos. I just wanted to say Borax. <laughs> <laughs> Bratwurst. Bratwurst. Okay. Uh, hey, Bratwurst. No. Um, nope. Bratos, where exactly are we coming out here? It's not exactly the most defensible place, but this passage should take us out beneath the Temple of Erois. On what side? Click says, losing his patience. It sort of leads directly into the temple itself. Okay. You're going to need to get us southeast to the Silent Weave. I think you should lead. Very well. So, Clix, are you going second then? Yeah, I'll go second. Yeah. Okay. I guess Califex, then Grom, then Andromedy. You are led through a very narrow passageway. In fact... Gron, at times, you're having to almost kind of tilt your head in uncomfortable ways as your horns, one or the other or both, scrape against the sides of this passageway. And you travel and come to a staircase just as narrow. Through this rock, you see a path that leads off towards one direction and this staircase in another. This way, up the stairs. What's that way? You do not want to go that way. You're right. That didn't answer the question. <laughs> he looks to the other hoplites behind you. He looks to Califex, and then he looks back at the three of you. This passageway is known by very few people in this polis. And what I'm about to tell you should, if not for everything that has happened, remain a secret. He pulls down his breastplate. And you see on his clavicle the tattoo of a returned mask. Oh. Let's just say I have a history that I don't exactly care to admit to. That way leads to secret passages of the unseen ones. Would I know what the fuck he's talking about? You can go ahead and make a history check. Sure. 22. Okay. 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 Andromedy... You have heard one story about what he is talking about. They're not referred to as the unseen ones generally. That's kind of colloquially what they are. The title that you would probably recognize this to be is the Orata, the single entity that exists within Akros that deals in the trafficking of illegal goods and the general thievery in the polis. Now, there is no full thieves' guild or even, like, a true church of Phoenix in Akros because the Eroan presence is so strong. Anything larger, anything less mysterious would immediately be squashed. 
I look directly at Clix as I say this, sort of noting the return to mask tattoo. Those who serve the god of masks are seldom proud of their faces. And remember, back at the boulders in the desert, we don't always need masks to be invisible. <laughs> and I would caution you against judging the people that are about to give you aid as we venture forth into the city. Given these extreme circumstances, perhaps if we take this other path, we will meet those people sooner. Clicks gestures towards the path, extending a hand. Okay, let's do it. I advise against it, but if you think you have some history or some dealing with them yourself, you are welcome to it, as Bratos leans against the wall, waiting your decision. Will you be able to get safely where you are headed without us? That's up to you. We can stay at the temple and await for the orders, or we can return after the bridge and wait there. We would not be so foolhardy as to attempt to cross to the wards. Well, you haven't spoken up yet. What do you think? I'm not afraid of a few thieves. What gets us to the Caliphon faster? If you just trust me, I think I can get us there with the help of a friend. A friend? You have friends? I guess you're right. I don't. You do have a few friends. Ugh, hold on. That shouldn't be a lot yes. for clicks, but yes. it is a lot for in clicks. This, <laughs> in this tunnel is where this happens. Yeah, clicks looks into the distance of the tunnel. I guess I just might. Come on. We don't need to talk about this anymore. And just keeps moving on. Gron nods and follows clicks. It's as good as Gron's going to get, and he knows it. <laughs> he knows it. Andromedy follows. Gron, I won't leave your side. Not again. Good. I'm coming too. Stay close. He follows as well. And the four of you leave Bratos' company and continue through this dark tunnel. This path is oddly straight in its construction. And Gron, go ahead and give me a survival check. Ten. You notice that it's not turning or twisting in any way, but that's about it. Finally, the four of you arrive at a simple wooden door. It has no handle and no noticeable features at all. What do you do? Do you know this place? It's not the place I'm familiar with, but the people. Well, then you better go first. Yeah. I try knocking in a very specific pattern. Okay. And I wait. What is the pattern that clicks knocks in? A very small opening appears in the doorway, and you see one gleaming yellow eye, like that of a animal looking back at a light source in darkness. Uh, using thieves can't, I just say, the threads have come to collect the debts owed to them. Go ahead and give me a persuasion check with advantage. 20. First roll was okay. really bad. And I was like, this is going to be so okay. uncool. I don't want that to happen. Okay. If it weren't for the thieves can't, the small opening shuts very quickly, and the door opens in. To clicks, you are greeted by a somewhat familiar figure. You see a very tall and thin feminine figure in a long black cloak with a billowing white mane tied in a topknot that pours down and out from her hood. Her fierce yellow eyes and finely honed claws overshadow her otherwise delicate leonine features and present the look of someone thoroughly experienced in her trade. She looks at you, clicks, and says, In Thieves' Cant or Common or Leonin? In Leonin. I'm entirely disappointed in you, Clix. What happened? Disappointed in me? He looks her up and down. Aren't you people supposed to be hard to find? Give me a, another persuasion check. Uh, 16. She says in common, Touche, get inside, and ushers you inside. They come with me. Excuse me? Uh, in thieves can't. We can speak in this tongue if it helps. But the debt you need to repay involves these three as well. She kind of scratches at her claws a moment. What does she look like right now? Like, what is her body language? Go ahead and give me a insight check. 
11. Okay. It's very hard to read. Mm -hmm. All you can really see are her face and her hands at this Mm -hmm. point. Her cloak is like oddly contoured to her body. But even so, it's very hard to get a pin on her at all. She looks at your party. She says back to you in Thieves' Cant, You better have something extremely valuable for me. Otherwise, I'm gone. And she ushers the four of you in. We follow. Or Clix does. I follow Clix at this point. Gron and Califax follow as well. Yeah. Uh, as we're walking, I will say to Andromedy. Look, I know you like to talk a lot and like to be courteous and kind, but talking and kindness and courtesy, they're not going to do you any favors here. I see. So I should imitate you and be gruff and silent. There would be no better. (laughs) I actually, it was literally funny. I was actually about to say those words to end my sentence. And I'm like, I think Andromedy will just say that if I don't. (laughs) That's great. Exactly. A perfect strategy. And we continue walking. What about me? You you generally do fine wherever you are. Just just be yourself. Just don't don't crash into anything. Gron gives a big smile. Califex putting his hood up simply looks at you, clicks, and says, Look, I've only just met you, but let's just say we'll both watch out for Gron, yeah. That sounds like a plan. And you I don't need to worry about. Indeed. The four of you are led through this door into a small perfectly round chamber. You can see the walls are made of large stone bricks, and the entire space looks ancient compared to all of the architecture of Akros that you have seen thus far. There is a single dimly lit blue torch on one side of this round room, and you see no other ways in or out of this space. This figure turns to the four of you, lowers her hood, looks to clicks, and speaks in common. Alright then, out with it. I sent you to that Arat and what did you learn from them? Nothing, apparently. Back for more help? Like I said, tell me what you have first. Well, our travels have not yielded much in the way of goods or gold or treasure. I do have this. And clicks pulls out the remaining... 33 gold worth of gems. Sure, sure. (laughs) Go ahead and roll me a deception check. 24. Okay. Okay. It's going to be hard to get me on anything with deception, sleight of hand, or stealth these days. (laughs) Almost like this series of encounters was made for you. I don't know. On a 24, she looks at the gems. She looks back up at you. She's going to make a counter roll. You are fucking lucky. <laughs> what did she hit, 23? No, she rolled oh, terribly, because okay. she has an enormous modifier to insights. You hold out these gems, and in the quickest flick of the wrist, she tucks them into her robe. She takes a breath and says, This polis is about to be a black hole on every map of Theros, and I know and cash out, clicks. What do you want? I need to just stay all in for just a little bit longer. And help us get to the colophon. Do that for me, and consider us, and the threads, completely even. Phaedra, uh, meet... meet the... You guys haven't named your party yet. Yeah, I don't I don't think we have, no. You're not gonna take it up to clicks to, to bear that burden? Ma- Friend squad. <laughs> <laughs> no, hold oh, on, uh, let me... Let me uh, clicks will turn to the party rather than address Phaedra. And say, this is Phaedra. You might as well all introduce yourselves to her. I'm Gron. Nice to meet you. My name's my own. It's good to meet you. And I look at Clicks like, am I doing it right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is... This is perfect. This is Andromedy. Impersonating Clicks. Holy shit. Andromedy, go ahead and roll me performance. <laughs> sure. Uh, That's my favorite part. Nope. Nope. I stumble all over that. <laughs> yeah, that's only a uh, three. Four, excuse me. I have a plus one. Clicks, modifier there. Clicks just buries his face in his paw. Phaedra looks to Clicks and says, 
back in Thieves Can't. Is that is that something wrong with that one? In Thieves Can't, they may have taken my advice a little too seriously. And then in common, while looking back to Andromedy, Click says, their name is Andromedy, which they can say safely in these quarters. I cross my arms and grunt. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, the edginess returns. We found it again. And this one is the newest among us. I am Califex. He bows simply. We've been together for a series of days now and been through quite a bit. I would almost call us Friend Squad. We call ourselves the Friend Squad. <laughs> <laughs> this is not staying in. Oh my god. No. <laughs> Vito. I'm not your friend. <laughs> Total loner. Oh, okay. a loner. <laughs> Raining it back in. Ron's going to take that very personally. He thinks he has no friends left by the time he leaves this place. <laughs> oh, my God. Raining it back in. The colophon. I see. A modest job for a modest price. Very well. She looks over the four of you and looking towards this unassuming blue flame. You see another flick of the wrist and the color of the flame changes from this brilliant blue to a bright red. And when it does, the passageway that you walked through glimmers and vanishes as another one behind her appears in the same fashion. Seems you've moved your parlor tricks away from the silent weave. What gives? Oh, dear clicks. Ever the simpleton. Where do you think we're below right now? Smirking, Click says, I guess I did underestimate you after all. In Thieves Can't, they don't call you the Invisible Ones for nothing. Ah, illusion magic. Very impressive. Uh, <laughs> very, very Im Im impressive. I can't think of another word. Sure. Um, go ahead and give me another performance roll with disadvantage. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yep, again, that's a three. Great. Uh, you hear from the front of the party. You're not fooling anyone, Oracle. <laughs> Just don't touch anything. Click says to Andromedy, I'll make you a deal. If you don't say another word for the rest of the trip, I'll teach you Thieves Can. <laughs> <laughs> Andromedy puts the, like, finger over their lips again. Okay. You are led through this new passage, indeed, created out of illusion, through a similar, narrow, dark passageway. However, this one quickly comes to another room, equally round and unassuming, the same sort of architecture as the previous. However, this one has five figures around the circular perimeter. The room is very dim, and in this one, there is no other light source, save for a rather odd sort of circular glow in the middle of the room. Andromedy, go ahead and give me a arcana check. Uh, 18. Okay. It looks out of place and nothing like the one you've seen before, but if it weren't for the scrying pool that you found in the Forgotten Temple, you wouldn't be able to recognize this odd, flat, faintly glowing reflective surface as a scrying pool. Andromedy opens their mouth to comment something on it, remembers they promised clicks they wouldn't say anything, and gestures excitedly towards it. <laughs> sure. If anyone wants to also roll perception on these other strange features of the room. 20. Very cool. Gran, on a 20, you look at these and it's strange. They look like these very fine, dark marble statues. So finely carved. On a 20, you almost think that they could come to life at any moment. Except the faces all have these golden masks, somewhat similar to the returned masks that you saw out in the Ashlands. However, these ones are much less ornamented in the way that return masks are, and almost actually look like literal faces rather than masks. You look up towards one of them, and you just hear the faintest whisper, 
Looks like you made it out of that hole alive, friend. Who's that? <laughs> Who's there? Do I know if that voice was in the room or in my head? Give me an insight check. Five. You have no idea. Where have I heard that voice before? Did we hear a voice? No. But Gron says that out loud, and Califex, looking back to Gron, says, What is it, Gron? Did you hear something? Yes. What was it? Someone speaking out of the darkness. I heard that voice when I was imprisoned in Akros. In a prison? What do you mean? Well, I told you they put me in prison when they brought me to Akros. And there was someone else there. Someone who told me his god knew the secret to escaping death. No, that's... that's impossible. Why would that be impossible? Looking back over to Phaedra, she looks about the room at all of the figures. She looks down at the center at this faint light source. And she says, in Celestial, which Andromeda would recognize, Great Orata, unseen ones, ever faithful to our god. Accept this offering and show us thy path as she drops the gems into this pool. No water splashes from the pool when they reach its surface. Instead, they simply and immediately vanish. When that happens, all of the masks in the room flicker, flicker again, flicker again a faster time, and you see a staircase appear that winds around the outside wall of the circular chamber and up. Before we go... I want to ask, Phaedra, who are these statues? The Arata's secrets are not mine to tell, Minotaur. As she kind of winks to you. One spoke to me. A voice I heard before. His name was Hyksus. You say that out loud in this space, and the one that you had heard this voice coming from, suddenly the visage changes to somebody completely different. Well, what... Wondrous circumstances that you may have been graced to meet one. Didn't feel like wondrous circumstances to me. We all follow our own paths, don't we? She kind of looks back to Clix as she says that, and then back to you. Forward. We haven't much time. The four of you are led up these stairs. They wind around this room, which you now see the ceiling of, in a sort of strange illusion continues to be the same distance away from you the entire time you walk this spiral staircase. You continue and climb what must be several stories worth of this until you get to a point. Clicks, go ahead and give me a perception check. 11. Sorry, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage. 11. <laughs> I appreciate the effort, though. Clicks, you fail to see what Phaedra has stopped the party beside. As she points it out to you, a small etching in the stone, marked in Thieves' Cant, it simply says, Wealthy. You want more gems or something? You can plainly see she rolls her eyes. Just be careful. I can't name too many people who share the same sort of experiences that we do, Clicks. After you have found your way... Whether or not you make it there, I'm not staying here. I can't tell what she means by here. Go ahead and roll insight. Okay, well, I'm having a hard time responding to her because I don't know what she's talking about. I guess I'll just try to respond as vaguely as I can. Which would be different from normal. Yeah. <laughs> got him! Got him! <laughs> got got him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> um, fair. All right, uh, I will say... Just get us outside the colophon. And we'll be even. You have no need to stay anywhere other than where you want to be. She gives a glaring side eye towards Andromedy and says, He's always, always been this edgy. Careful clicks, you might hurt someone. And she places her hand on this symbol. And you see the brick begin to bend back and form an archway. This archway leads into a dark room that all three of you can just passively tell is in a building. It's not underground. She gestures and says, And thus, 
We are even. I'll say and thieves can't. And when we get to the top, we'll be outside the colophon? You'll have to forgive me, but I've worked with enough threads and enough invisible ones to know that sometimes we play loose with our words. Ever the fool clicks. Ever the fool. She turns from you and disappears, becoming invisible. And you are left with this archway. Well, is this where we need to be? I can tell you I'm out of tricks. Might as well keep moving forward. All right. I grab my maul and go through the archway. I follow him, and if we're walking in formation, I wait a few paces and then turn back to Andromeda and say, You can talk now, by the way. You know, druids can speak a secret language, but thieves can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Is this what happens to you when you're quiet? Oh my god. <laughs> when you first offered oh to teach god. me, I remembered that old linguistics joke, and I've been holding it in ever since. We were in there for like an hour. Andromedy, how do you keep a thought to yourself like that for so long? We oracles are taught some measure of discipline in when and how to speak in order to best channel the divine will of the gods. The real question is how dare you subject your people to it? You need to go back to school. Clix just turns around, gives Andromedy the backside, and walks on. The four of you pass through this archway, and it immediately vanishes behind you as if it was never there. And you find yourselves in a bare but large chamber. Wondrous. Deceitful magic. Just because it doesn't make sense to you doesn't mean it's deceitful. Califex kind of looks down at the ground. Andromedy really gives you a hard time, but I think Gron's made some good friends here. You know, maybe we all have. <laughs> Damn it, that was Jimmy's react. Jimmy's eyes lit up. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice that Clix can admit this to Califex, but no one else. It is great. Andromedy, go ahead and give me a perception check. Sure. 17. Andromedy, on a 17, you recognize this space. You are in one of the large antechambers of the Citadel itself. Sort of a large gathering room. There are enormous columns that decorate this space and murals of various gods and their heroes strewn about the walls. You know you're probably in one of the lesser chambers, and so assuming Polymede or anybody else is here at the Citadel right now, they would be at its summit. Okay. I turn to Clix. Your friend was true to her word. We are in the Citadel. Come, follow me. I will... Bring us to where the others are likely to be meeting. Andromedy leads the four of you out of this space where you see the large steps of the citadel going up and down in both directions, as well as a very different view of Akros than the last one that you saw. You are at what is truly the highest point in the entire polis. You can see soldiers and hoplites defending the gate of the Colophon against a gathered swath of this horde, as well as numerous other crowds and war bands tearing up and down errant polis streets in the far distance. Andromedy, you lead up the steps and indeed find Polymede at the top beside a number of people. Talking amongst this crowd is someone you would recognize as the Oracle of Erois, or Erois's hand, Arissa. You also see someone who you would definitely recognize at a distance, but perhaps never met personally, and that is Tyronica, the regent of Akros. She's a young woman with very long black hair and a very finely made red and blue toga. Also beside her are three other figures all looking quite a bit older, you assume to be her counselors, a human, a centaur, and a leonin. The three of you approach. As we do, Clixel looked at Andromedy and say, Well, I did my part. This is probably your time to shine. Clix, you say that as you look towards this group. Go ahead and give me a perception check. I ain't perceiving much of shit, because I got a two. Very cool. Polymede sees you all approaching. By the gods, how did you get your party 
through. Andromedy says, there will be time for that later. Andromedy walks right into the center of the room. I don't need to reiterate to any of you how dire the circumstances are. However catastrophic you may believe them to be, the power behind them is greater still. I need word sent to every corner of Theros. A fragment of the Titan's power has crept from its eternal vault, and it should require all of our strength, not just the strength of Akros alone, to seal it where it belongs. I need everyone made ready for battle that is not yet. I need to speak to the Queen Regent in private. I have a revelation for her ears only, and I will need a bath. I have walked across the desert and the ashlands for days. I will not die in this state of filth. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Mike fucking drop from Andromedy. Okay, here's what happens. Go ahead, Andromedy, and make me a persuasion check with advantage. Sure. 21. Okay. Polymene is convinced. Arissa is convinced. Okay. Tyronica looks towards her council, the two that are there, and looks towards the two oracles. Polymede, what is the meaning of this? Polymede looks to you and then back to her. She says, as the storm auger, and Arissa speaks up and says, and as Eros's hand, you must heed the voice of Clothis's words. You hear some murmur among these counselors, and Tyrannica looks back at you and says, Then let it be done. We shall muster our forces, all that remain of the Legion, within and without, and continue to send word to anyone who will listen. Let it be known from this moment forth that fair Akros is fighting back. You see the various people within the room begin moving. You see Arissa immediately turn to Polymede and say, Right, I shall tell Ace Race. We will need to find a way to mount an offensive. Tyrannica turns to her counselors and leaves into a smaller chamber. Polymede then turns to you and the party and says, Very well. Get your business in order. Tyrannica will see you now. She kind of takes your arm and says into your ear, You are doing well, Andromedy. Thank you, Sophistes. And I'll follow Tyrannica into the room she went into. In a burst of lightning, Polymede vanishes into the sky. Clicks and Gron. You are left in a large chamber with very fine furnishings. This seems to be some sort of throne room. You see two guards posted on the inside of the large archway you entered through. You see a number of people rushing about in a haste after these proclamations were made. What do you do as Andromedy leaves? What do we do now? Are there windows in the room? There are large arched windows that look out over the rest of the colophon i'd like to take a look outside the windows sure go ahead and give me a perception check 17 okay well his bad luck starts now clicks you noticed when the first time you pointed to the group as it was gathered there was there was polymede there was there was that oracle there was the other oracle the big centaur there was this girl this little girl that they all saw and thought was important the first time you looked, there were there were three. There were three kind of older counselor, senator-looking figures. They're all kind of dressed the same. And there was a human, and there was a, there was a centaur. And you know, Andromedy started talking, and everybody started talking. And then it was like there were just two. There was the human and the centaur. And that's because the third one, the Leonin, you see on a balcony below your view as one part of this citadel connects to a nearby building, this sort of egress, this covered walkway, mm -hmm. the unmistakable figure of Lyukar fleeing this scene. Clix is going to start heading in that direction as stealthily as possible. He's not even okay. going, he is not even How... going to tell Gron and Califax what he's doing. He's going to just leave. Safe enough jump? Uh, give me a quick investigation. 20. Great. You look down to the roof of this covered egress below you, and you think it's about a story jump onto the roof. Gonna try and do that without making noise. Awesome. Go ahead and roll me first the athletics check. 18. Great. Now go ahead and roll me a flat stealth check. 25. Okay. Gonna 
roll perception here. Okay. You jump down stealthily, cat-like, onto the roof of this egress. Lyukar still hastily walking. From the back, you see the visage of a large, older Leonin with a very long, flowing golden mane that is faded white at the ends, tied back behind him in several braids and jewelry. As you see him, go ahead and give me a, another perception check. Seven. He seems to be keeping the same pace that he was before you jumped. And so you see him, he's about now, on that roll, he's 200 feet away at the pace that he's still maintaining. Okay. So you're still on the roof. You would have to jump down and into this egress, and then there's this big okay. walk. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to tail as much as I can. My, I'll tell you my full plan, and you can have me roll to do all of those things. My full plan is to jump down, tail him, and get as close as I can, and then hide somewhere. So let me know what you want me to do to, to accomplish that task. Where did clicks go? On that statement, Califex looks around. He's vanished. Where did he... Grand, go ahead and give me a perception check. That's actually a 22. Okay. It's not even possible for me to roll a 25. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, Gron, you hear like a faint noise of somebody or something, maybe a small bird or animal, land out a nearby window. And that's all Gron would really recognize. Just very unassuming, and Clix is gone. You didn't see where he went? Uh, Califix is going to go along. That's strange. I was kind of just looking around the room, and all of a sudden he was gone. He's probably going to steal something. We cut to Andromedy. You enter Tyrannica's private receival chamber. You see she's flanked by these other two counselors of hers. She's sitting in a simple but neat chair in front of a small table, legs crossed, and just kind of looking you up and down. You can see her trying to hide the look of someone who may be overwhelmed with the situation she finds herself in the middle of. I look at the two counselors. Please... My words are for the Queen Regent only. It is a family matter. She kind of furrows her brow, looks to the two counselors, and back at you. Go ahead and roll me another persuasion check. Sure. Because you pointed out something there, I'll give you advantage. Sure. That's only going to be a 15. They didn't roll that good. Five and a six on them. You've, Yeah. She looks to them, and, and they seem as though they're going to stay, but then with the wave of her hand... They leave. And once they've left, I will take a knee and I will say, Your uncle yet lives, though if it can be called true light, I do not know. How dare you? What do you mean? What is this? When we sought the guidance of Perforos within Mount Velus, he told us of a champion that stood guard at one eye pass. He was unmistakable, my lady. It was your uncle, though infused with the power of the Forge and of Nyx. He remembers only the name of his wife and the feeling of steel in his hands. She jumps up from her seat and quickly moves to a very small window which she looks out of. How, how can this be? God of the Forge, what sort of cruel fate? Annex, after all these years. She looks back at you, and, and you can plainly see a look of fright and surprise in her eyes now. Why have you told me this? I will stand up from kneeling. You are his kin. You have a right to know. And by the words of the gods? Do mortals have right to know of their fate on this earth? This is... I am the voice of fate itself. If my responsibility is not to speak of fate, then it is not at all. Forgive me. I was not even alive when he fell and sigh me. She carried so much sadness in her heart before she too vanished. And now there is only me. I am not even their child. And yet even so I feel a horrible cursed sadness for them. <sighs> Thank you for telling me this truth. I can tell you are someone of your word and of your chosen purpose. We will do anything we can to help you in her mission. Thank you, my lady. I do not know what is to become of the great burden that rests upon your bloodline. But trust in the path that fate has laid before you. My path leads to the steam room. 
I sort of shake some dust off my clothes as I bow and excuse myself. Very cool. We cut briefly back to Gron. As you and Califex are wondering where clicks vanish off to, you hear another crack of thunder, and Polymead is at your side. It is my understanding that you know of one who carries the jewel you are looking for. That's right. Can you describe them for me, please? Well, he's a bloodhorn minotaur. Much bigger than me. Horrifying, bloodthirsty look in his eye. He goes by the name Hargot. So far you've described about a third of the savage minotaurs that lay siege to our polis. Anything else? Is there anything else? Go ahead and just roll general intelligence. Thirteen. In in game one, I kind of described a bit of the, like, treasure that he had hoarded on his person, like jewelry and and the gem itself, and how his horns are kind of ringed with gold and various piercings and things. Okay. He's very metal. Very metal. Yeah. Okay. Just like 80s thrasher metal, red and black. He wears the loot and treasures of his fallen enemies all over his person and on his horns. The ruby you seek is among them. Very well. Last I was in Akros, in this horde of minotaurs, Hargot, Hargot found me, as if we were brought together by fate, like he knew exactly where to find me. I see. Perhaps then there's a way that you would be able to do the same. Curious. She extends her hand out towards you, placing it gently on your shoulder. Go ahead and make a, here we go, religion check with advantage. All right. 17. Very cool. On that roll, you see this spark of blue light spring forth from her arm and onto your maul. You can only use this once. This should be able to find Hargat Bloodhorn within about a half mile or so. How will I know when he's near? That, friend Minotaur, I'm afraid is something only you will know. Okay. And in a flash, she is gone. Gron, not only do you not really know where Klix has vanished off to, but after another several moments of watching the various soldiers and other people moving about with their tasks, you come to realize Andromeda has been gone quite a while as well. And it comes to a point where you begin wondering this, and Arissa, the large centaur with this brilliant red and white accoutrement, approaches you and Califax. Now then, we have mustered the remaining forces of the Legion. We are ready to move, and your command. Brothers, one and all, what are your orders? We got back to clicks. You see Lyakar hastily crossing this walkway. What do you do next? My overall plan is to jump down to get to his level, and then trail as close behind as I can until I can hide somewhere uh, where whenever he stops. Or if I get the sense that he's trying to get into a door or somewhere I can't access, let me know. So you go and climb down the side. You can do that with your second story work fairly easily. Go ahead and roll me stealth with advantage. Not going to need advantage. That is a 30. <laughs> <laughs> is that even a nat 20 or is that an, off a 19? It's a nat 20 plus 10. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's the shit. That's the good shit right there. I literally there. vanish from existence. <laughs> you do, and you, like, fireman's <laughs> pole down one of these pillars onto this walkway, and you stealth through the shadow. It's broad, it's broad daylight outside. It's, like, not even noon, and you stick to the darkness of this pathway and trail by car, who does not seem to change his course in any way. You are about the same distance away from him, several hundred feet. You can see him very clearly in front of you, and you see at the end of this kind of arching walkway between these two buildings that he dips into some sort of door or passageway. What's beyond that door or passageway? So it's not like he goes in, it's like he's walking, and then he goes sideways and it's gone. Without going exactly where he went, I'm going to like... You're going to trail. I'm going to trail. I'm going to trail. You're going to yeah. trail behind. You proceed. And 
you come to the end of this walkway. I'm just going to roll some perception checks here, but a 30 is a 30, so... Yeah. Um, anybody who would be looking doesn't see shit. So you get to the end of this walkway. You are now fully off the citadel and somewhere else. Go ahead and give me a perception check. 11. You find yourself on a balcony of a very fine building. This could be somebody's villa. This could be somebody's estate. And you peer around to try and see where he went. And you find a simple yet elegant wooden door. Go ahead and give me an investigation check. That's the door he went into, as far as I know? You assume so, yeah. 21 total. It appears to have a simple handle on it, and it is closed. On that roll, you can assume it's also locked. All right. No one can see me, right? Still on that 30? You roll the fucking 30. We're letting it ride. I am going to use Disguise Self to turn into my mother. (sighs) Oh, shit. Oh, Oh, shit. shit. Okay. What does that look like? Nothing. Because, again, in total darkness, no one can really see me. I guess I just kind of crouch down, and and upon raising my body back to a standing position, I assume the shape of my deceased mother, Kinasa. Absolutely savage. You don her form, and what do you do? I knock on the door. Oh. Oh. (laughs) Okay. You knock on the door, and we cut back to Andromeda. (laughs) <laughs> God damn it, I want to know what happens. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, Andromeda, you are in a private bathing chamber. You see a large steaming pool, very Grecian style. What's going through your mind? As I step down to soak in the hot water, I just allowed my frantic thoughts to clear for the first time in weeks. I just let my thoughts and my muscles and everything relax. And I sort of open my mind up to see if perhaps Clothis has any guidance for me. And in fact, over the, you know, ten minutes that I'm bathing, I might use my Oracle's Piety to ask about something. Okay. I think I want to use Augury. I want to ask, weal or woe, we should attempt to complete the Eye of Creation before committing to an all-out battle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You cast this spell in this space. A thick white steam and mist begin to fill the chamber. You see these translucent threads through the fog, all attached in various corners of this space, all leading to a central location on the other side of the pool from where you are sitting. And this spot is tangled, thread, messy, and nodded and that is going to be as shitty as this is a both okay realizing this i get out of the bath i put on my robe i see that i'm alone in this room with my effects and i open the pixis of pandemonium and take out the crown (gasps) oh my god oh my god oh my fucking god Andromedy, you absolute saboteur of my designs. Go ahead and roll a d8. And that's where we'll end it. Insane! Absolutely insane. What a fucking game. Yes, this could not have gone any better. Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake and May. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.